Hello everyone, this is In Game Arts with another boxing that the offline product game review. This is Scorn for the PlayStation 5. The jump right into it. This physical copy here is just the base vanilla version of the game, so the on disc version is 1.0. Now, sadly, there was an update available. This update size was 250 megabytes big and will take you to version 1.101.0 since the time next video. Now, like always, I play all my games completely offline with an unrestricted account, and I didn't experience any massive game-breaking bugs or issues. And as well, I was still unlocking trophies with my unrestricted account, and I even platinumed the game. Now, this was the first time I've ever gone into Scorn. I had no prior knowledge of this game other than little tidbits. I do know this game first released on the Xbox console, I believe Xbox Series X. And that game was like a time exclusive, but I'm super glad it got a wider release. Not just for I mean, physical collecting, because I like PlayStation, and I don't really prefer collecting Xbox games because they require some registered account that you have to do online. But anyway... I was happy that they came on console because I am more happy when these indie or smaller studios get wider releases to wider audience. I'm not really in the, the ballpark of everything has to be exclusive on platforms. I understand the point of exclusives. I just, indie games I really like when they get wider releases to help support those smaller studios. Going into this, I, so like I said, I knew nothing about it, so I was very intrigued in what was going to happen, what's going on in the game, and this game was a pleasant surprise. Now, I only knew the game wasn't very long, and I knew it wasn't very combat heavy. It was more of a journey over experience. But I do want to point out that I did have the game crash once on me. I don't know, really know why, it just randomly happened. But also, I did have some frame rate stuttering and frame rate drops. They're not super significant, but you won't notice them at certain moments of the game. It's just you can notice that things slew down a little bit and things got a little bit more choppy at certain moments. And that's about it. Everything else ran relatively good, which is extremely nice to see. Listen, I did complete the game and I did platinum it. But I do want to point out the game is relatively short. You can probably beat the game within six, possibly seven hours if you don't get stuck on massive puzzles or anything like that. But I think for a lot of people, we're a little disappointed that because not just from the length standpoint, but just because the game isn't really combat heavy and it's not really even a puzzle game, if you will. It's more of a, how do you say, an experience that you're going through it. The game is very graphically detailed in certain moments and just certain aspects of the game are just com completely mysterious. The best way I can explain it from my first time experience was that the game reminded me of Myst. When I f remember my mom playing it long ago, or when I played it way later, it was just a feeling of this mysterious world you know nothing about. And it's what is going on, and every time you progress, it just kept more, more and more mysterious. I don't want to use the word weirder, because it, w it was already weird to begin with. Now it's just like... You, this how deep can this rabbit hole go? Go. That's kind of what Scorn was. It was just this rabbit hole. I do want to point out though quickly in the video, you're not going to see too much in video in terms of content because I do not want to provide any spoilers. So whether you want to listen to my commentary and don't listen, to, watch the video. But if you're going to watch the video, I will try to limit the amount of content you're going to see because again, the game's not very long, and I want to leave what moments there are as mysterious as it can possibly be for you. So just keep that in mind if you're going to get upset that I'm not showing comments combat or anything in the game but there is combat and that combat is relatively simple and I think that's also what a lot of people were disappointed that they were expecting maybe some doom style gameplay where it's like fighting all these uh, <laughs> I don't know, abominations of creatures, and that's not really the game. I do appreciate the combat. The combat isn't necessarily bad, it's just simple. And I did like some of the survival aspects of it. We gotta make sure you maintain your resources, and there is a finite of resources, so keep that in mind. And just getting you all these equipment and how weird it is and how... But it still played good. It just functioned and everything like that. It's just not the most selling point of the game, and that's perfectly fine. The puzzles, while not super challenging, they were interesting and they kept me more and more just like, what is going on in this world? And I just, every single step I made, I was just more like, wow, this is so mysterious and weird and crazy and I love every single second of it. But I do want to point out one aspect. It depends on who you have wa watching it or where you're going to be watching it, maybe even live streaming it to some extent. There is some strong sexual theme in this game, especially at the later end of the game. I want to very point that. I don't want to provide any spoilers. But at first, I thought it was just named like, wow, look at that random scene. But then you get further into the game and it's like, oh, oh okay, 
It reminded me of an artist named Louis, I may be getting his right name wrong, Louis Royal, Royal, where he provided these art books and they're very sexual and they got very like skin and or bionic but also metallic all combining together. It reminded me a lot of his art. You would have to really look it up, but keep in mind he does provide adult artwork. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be looking that up and where you're gonna look it up. But in the end, I did enjoy this game. It was an experience, and I can totally 100% always recommend someone to check it out. A lot of people got on about the, how short the game was, which it seems odd to me, because while there was games like Donut County, which is overwhelmingly positively reviewed, as well as like Untitled Goose Game that I recently covered, and it's not a very long game, that game is overwhelmingly positively reviewed, and then you get this game where... I, don't, I guess people had just had a much different expectation from it. Sure, yes, it's not... A, a combat game it's not a puzzle game but it's an experience much like donut county and untitled goose game they're just more of a unique experience that i hope the developer can get some foothold to allow them to invest more and provide not only just a, maybe a sequel but also provide a much bigger game in, in, in its own way style whether it's the same game or within the same universe i don't know but it, it gets a foothold not every game could be this big AAA budget game that gives you 40 hours of content from these indie developers that's going to be of this graphical style. You got to keep your expectations limited. I don't even think this game was sold at full price. I think it was like a $40 game when it first came out. Again, don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, I think for what they provide... I still enjoyed myself, and I can totally recommend this game to anybody to play over the weekend. As I said, it's not a very long game, so I can think of if you're into these kinds of games, these into these in these kind of mysterious. I, mean, I don't even really call this a horror game because it's sure it's unnerving, but it has no jump scares. It doesn't have like any monsters that are terrifying. It's just uncomfortable, disgusting, it's just confusing. But you're just so like it's glued to the screen you're wondering what next disgusting thing you're going to throw at me and what next cool animation and set piece you're going to do for a smaller studio and a studio i've never heard of this was very very impressive and i really enjoyed the game for what it was and it's definitely a game i can totally recommend again the game's not super hard but just other than this keep in mind of limited resources and as well as the game's not very long so I mean, you can p easily pick this up and beat it over the weekend or recommend it to someone and tell them to beat it over the weekend if they're interested in these kinds of games just keep in mind about the sexual themes definitely near the end of the game depending on where you're playing it and how you're playing it like live stream i don't know how live stream is going to feel with this game especially near the end so in my personal opinion it's 100 percent worth the well pick up the game worked perfectly to beginning to end other than those frame rate stuttering problems as well as that one crash and it only had a 250 megabyte update it's not that bad honestly in my personal opinion, it's 100% worth a pickup, and I'm really glad I finally got to try it. I'm glad this developer was able to get their vision. It is just an artistic vision that they were trying to create, and I think they did an amazing job. And it just kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. So like always, I will try to leave links down in the description. Highly recommend it, especially if you can get it on a relatively cheap price or use copy or in some way. Check it out. You won't regret it. I think you will have a unique experience. Sure, it's not going to be no Resident Evil Silent Hill for you, but if you're like me, I'm definitely more intrigued and definitely want to see a sequel in some form if possible. So like always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next unboxing video. Bye-bye!